Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you're in for a real treat today because it's a special edition of Let's Get Metaphysical show. And my guest today is Cynthia Winfield. You heard her back in episode 54, co-creating a loving world. And let's just jump right into a good time here. Welcome, welcome, my really cool friend. <laughs> Thank you, my really cool friend, Ellie B. I love being here with you. Would you please share with us three things that you think our listeners will find interesting about you? To introduce myself, I consider myself a heart-centered, light-centered, spiritually guided writer. And by that, I mean when I wrote this book, Sovereign Souls, Whosoever Edition, I did not write it. It was a download from the universe. I sat in the tub um, because water conducts energy. And I, this is a novel in um, verse. So I would write the first stanza of a poem, and then I would sit in the tub, and the universe would finish the poem. Um, and that's how I got through a 51, I think, chapter book. Um, also, too. I am an excellent caprine midwife. I have assisted with multiple goat births, um, and that came from being a reader, um, from reading the James Harriet books. Um, and now I'm blanking on the all things bright and beautiful, all things great and small. I read those so many times, probably when I was in fourth and fifth grade, that by the time I saw a goat trying to deliver a kid in distress, it was like, uh-huh, that's what he described, you know, need, I, I got the, I got the book and looked at it briefly, and it was like, yeah, that was everything he said, you know, put it back in, turn it around, um, bring it back out, and that same goat had issues, I think, three more times before um, I had to sell her, and, but always came out okay. The first time, um, the kids were still born because I didn't catch it in time, but um, oh, and the other thing that's different about me is I have traversed um, not a good deal, but uh, portions of the LGBTQIA spectrum, starting out with a plain old boring heterosexual <laughs> um, identity. Um, and I was telling you earlier that when I was student teaching, I also had some gender non-conforming behavior where I remember doing parent-teacher conferences, wearing a dress but a man's tie, um, so there a little bit of cross-dressing there, and I was definitely a strong ally to the gay community. Um, that was 20 years of my life, and then uh, the next 20 years, um, I was a lesbian, and my um, wife was a different race, and um, I never touched the bisexual because it was one or the other. Um, and that marriage has dissolved as well. And now um, in my seventh decade, um, I'm claiming Polly and Pan, whereby I have a primary relationship and that's everything, but I'm free to explore. I don't expect too much, but yeah, um, the door is open. So, um, pan means anybody, um, you know, I don't care what you bring. Um, if, if the chemistry is there, the chemistry is there. So that's pretty interesting. But currently I am writing and publishing light centered, heart centered, light filled books. Um, even those that include dark characters. And we were talking um, a little bit earlier and you were liking the animal stories that I have. So one of the threads that I have on Kindle Vela that is unfolding slowly um, because it's co-written with my current partner and yeah um, yeah <laughs> writing together and getting those stories done is, is going to be slow but um, that's country tales um, uh, adventures on a mountaintop or something because now I'm living on a mountaintop I've lived on a farm a couple of times and I gardened before but um, now on the farm here it's it's small I had uh, I was telling you recently that a friend called um, one day, and because I still had ringtones on my phone, I knew it was a light worker, so I wanted to answer, but I was in the middle of gathering eggs, and so I just answered the phone and said, hang on, I'm fighting with the chicken. 
and she won't let me live that down. It's like, but but I had my cane, and the cane was lifting up that chicken's butt so that I could get the eggs that I wanted for the day. And then you know, um, yeah. So life is interesting. So I've known lots of people who raise chickens, some for the meat, some for the eggs, some for both. Nobody ever told me they were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, use, I, in my last farm, I would wait for the chicken to get off the nest, but I've got a broody hen now. And so she wants to sit on those eggs. And I finally decided we lost a hen um, a few weeks ago. And um, so now I was out there with a red marker last weekend, and now she has eight eggs that are marked with dates and stuff that I'm not collecting. So last night I went out and collected six unmarked eggs. So we had half a dozen for you know breakfast today, but um, she got to keep the eight to sit on. So uh, may I ask you, because I buy my eggs from two different farmers who also raise meat. And I, I wasn't aware that, did you keep them? for different dates i just thought oh the, i i just put the the date on it so that i would know that if it was you know three months out that that um it, it's not going to hatch i forget what the i think it's like 21 days i forget oh, but, you know, oh. i threw on the date and i threw like red lines on it so that i i wouldn't pick up the egg when i was trying to pick up the ones i wanted for here oh wow um, I never thought about that. I would be really freaked out if I opened an egg and there was a dead embryo in it. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah, um, on my last farm. Yeah, it happens. But um, yeah, if, if, you, if you don't get it in time, you might wind up with, a, with an embryo, um, but whatever. The eggs, I'm pretty sure, are all fertilized because um, there's a rooster in there with them. And I don't refrigerate them um, because I don't have to. <laughs> you know, you refrigerate the ones that you get from the store because they've washed them and, and um, you know, the shells are porous. And now, yeah, but if you just take them from the hen, I keep them out on the counter. Yeah, all my friends never refrigerate the eggs, they ever wash them. It's like they're the best eggs, and the shells are like, man, it's hard to crack them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've I have been giving shells back to the hens so that they, you know, get the calcium in their diet, but I'm going to go back to saving those shells for my worm bin because, um, you know, I can get them back into the soil that way and the eggs are starting to get hard to crack. We had duck eggs for a while, um, but yeah, the, we only have one duck. <laughs> So I let her keep a couple. She's she she's got it. She's gone broody. So I she's got a couple out there, and there is no Drake. So she's not going to hatch anything. But I'll let her sit on. I thought um, wherever I lived, there are always ducks and there are always pairs. Right, but there happens to be only one living here. I mean, when I had I had geese on the last farm, and we had a pair of geese. They mate for life, and it was great while the two of them are alive, except during the broody times because they get really nasty you know you go anywhere near that nest and they're hissing and you know they're they're not happy um they're dangerous too <laughs> yes well they they can be i mean i always gave them a wide berth they never attacked me but they told me they would attack me if i came closer <laughs> um but yeah the i don't know if there was ever a pair of ducks here or not i don't remember so Tell me about the dog who sings with you. Oh, okay. Max is, what's the word? Um, a corgi and a short-legged beagle cross. And I didn't know there was such a thing as a short-legged beagle, but apparently there is. But I just thought it was a beagle face with corgi legs. Short-legged Beagle Corgi Cross, I was told, doesn't kiss faces and doesn't climb in chairs. So I sat in a chair, he jumped up. But, so he jumps on chairs, my chair, as well as his dad's, and he kisses me in the face, which, which apparently he doesn't do to anybody else. But this dog can hug, okay? When whoever lets him out in the morning, lets him out in the morning, the other person is in bed, he runs over, jumps up in be bed, and wriggles his body all up along yours and I mean he's hugging you with the side of his body when I'm in the chair at night I I now I have a towel on the chair so I can put it over me because he sheds like crazy <laughs> and he comes and he just he just loves and he pushes his face up here <laughs> it's 
it's adorable. But he sings, um, he likes the theme song to MASH, and he will along with that and there's one commercial i don't know what it is but sometimes late at night he will sing again um he's he's cute that way yeah that's that's really special it's so interesting i know you're going to talk about animals i was cleaning up my computer yesterday and i stopped and read the book that i wrote about my relationship with my cat who continues to be my master teacher. I know mm -hmm. what his name is now, that he's not in a cat suit. And he had the biggest fluffy tail. And I'd sit down on, it was a back chair back, oh, it was like 2005, when it's where you rest on your knees. So there's mm -hmm. no back behind the chair. And he'd get up behind me on there and he'd wrap his tail around me. <laughs> and it, it, he was hugging me. There's no question mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love when cats do that. They 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 hug you, and yeah, this is the first dog that I've met that hugs. You know, I've had dogs. You know, they put their face in your you know hand and stuff. But yeah, this guy hugs. He rubs up along your body and tucks under your chin. He's like, oh, let me still go with you. That's the that's the. Does he talk with you or telepathically or in grunts or? No, no, I think the cats do that more, <laughs> um, especially the ancient cat Wicca, who is now sitting on the front porch, staring at the door, waiting for me to come feed her more chicken or fish or something. Um, yeah, I, I, I was telling you before we got on the call, she, we have three cats, two um, younger brother tuxedo cats uh, litter mates who can still hunt and they hunt very actively and they have fresh warm meals practically daily and they like i have a squirrel tail out on the back back area that you know that was left um but wicca can't hunt anymore and she's this ancient black cat with mats and you know she doesn't want to have her eyes clean but she lets me clean them um and she moved very slowly until sometime, I forget what I did, but it's in one of my country tale stories that got her to run. And now she will run when she hears me coming out. <laughs> um, and I started feeding her meat because, you know, she couldn't catch any. And like if I was having salmon, I'd bring out just little pieces. And she ate so freaking slowly. It was it was really hard to stay with her, even if I brought her a teeny little piece because I'm sitting with her, but I'm also feeding all the mosquitoes out there. Um, it's a state bird and uh, <laughs> yeah, my father would tell me that's your civic duty, go feed them. <laughs> but um, you know, when I come in with all the welts, I don't feel that way. Now she has developed an appetite and she's starting to eat bowls of food and chowing them down pretty well. I think she's actually starting to grow a middle. <laughs> So I'm proud of her. She's she's come a long way. That's neat. Animals, are, frankly, I think animals, especially cats and plants, I think they're all smarter than we are. Mm -hmm. Just when you observe. So I know I get to see all these fascinating the moms and all, the brood that follows them. And they're like the groundhog was going along one day and I thought. Why is she expanding sideways? And then I saw little feet on each side. <laughs> oh, so but they're they, like a mother hen? Yeah. Oh. And I, you didn't even see their faces because they were in there. And a turkey, one of the turkeys comes with 11 little ones. And it's so neat because they walk right with mom. And every animal that's out here is with mom. Mm -hmm. And it just helps me realize that it doesn't matter what animal you are, whether a human or you're some other mammal, mothering is an instinct that your children know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was on my last farm, um, my, my hens free ranged and in the springtime, there'd be mamas and lots of little babies running around and it was great fun to watch them. Well, I'm gonna take a really quick break here and remind everybody, you got to ask yourself questions. Otherwise, your life will be stuck looking the way it does now all the time. 
so I wrote a book. You got to ask questions how to be happy, healthy, and secure. At the time I wrote it, the book actually sold for $97, just the book. And now I've recorded the audio to go with it. And I have a special offer for you for just, you know what? Go to the page. The link will be in the show notes. You get the audio and the book and use it because if you think you're preparing your legacy, there's a good chance you aren't unless you know what questions to ask. And you want to know that those you leave behind are taken care of as you thought they would be. And now let's go back to some more really cool stories from my really neat friend, Cynthia. We used to have a pair of geese on the last farm, which was fun because oftentimes you'd come in the, there was a, the house was up on a hill and the driveway was a straight shot up with a gate a little ways in from the road enough so that a you know truck and trailer could pull in and wait at the gate um and you'd pull in through the gate and the two the pair of geese would come waddling down to say hello and then they'd say hello and they'd go off and do their goose thing um and that was neat uh i miss having big goats when i moved here we have one goat uh, a miniature buck a dwarf buck and the plan was to get him a mate early in the spring but when we drove down the hill and around to a holler uh to where the man who had 100 goats the prior year um you know the person where you could get another goat for 40 dollars um lived apparently he didn't make it through the winter i mean this happens and um no, there was no movement and no goats um and looking online i mean people are selling goats for you know three and four hundred dollars and we're not buying uh well papered goats i had those before i i i've spent that on goats but in this particular relationship no we're looking for you know a a, a just a, a goat pet so the um ishtar can have a mate and have kids run around and then sell them off the the plan was to Ishtar stays through the winter and then you know he gets a girlfriend in the spring and she has kids maybe one or two sets and then you know the the girlfriend and the kids get sold off and Ishtar stays through the winter again because um it's a matter of how much water you want to have to keep providing through the winter everything freezes oh. it's, a lot, it's a lot of work to go out and and chop ice I mean I did that on the last farm and I'm moving with a cane now and you know I'm okay with just if I if I did get a, a standard size bread goat dough and I called the person to whom I sold my last goats and said, when you have a bread dough, give me a call. I want one. And yeah, I'll probably have to pay a couple hundred dollars for it, but that's all right. Um, she'll stay. She'll, you know, I'll break the, break the ice for her, but um, because I want to have a milk goat again, you know, I just like, I love, fresh ricotta off the stove warm <laughs> um, it's, it's just delicious so yeah when i lived out in the country up on a ridge in idaho mm -hmm. and the bureau of land management owned all the land that was across the street from me and the way they kept the sagebrush and the grass down was it a what do you, a, a goat herder? What is mm -hmm. that what you call mm -hmm. They bring in a goat herder in, he fenced a small area, and they'd eat until it was all gone, mm -hmm. and then they moved the fence along, and that was how they took care of the mm -hmm. land and the goats, and I thought that was really cool. I, I used my goats um, at my last place a couple of times to help a friend who had, what was it? I think it was overgrown thistle. She, she had a... Um, rescue for dogs um and she she places them and does you know dog uh coordinates dog transportation you know if somebody if the dog is in tennessee but somebody in new york state adopts the dog she does arranges the transport so you drive it to knoxville and you drive it to, <laughs> until the dog gets to its new home um and she had a an enclosure that was overgrown i think it was thistles and so um i had to go away 
for a couple of weeks, I was doing a training or something. Um, I think it was, I think I was interviewing, uh, doing an interview job and yeah, we'd have to go away for the trainings. And so I left a couple of goats with her, um, came back and oh, no more thistles. Uh. <laughs> so would you tell us about the books that you have on, is it called vellum? Kindle Vella, V-E-L-L-A. Okay. Yeah, if you go to Kindle eBooks and then look down a couple of rows, you'll see Kindle Vella. Um, I have, I think, three up now under Cynthia Winfield. Um, the Country Tales is, uh, the first one is about Max the Wonder Dog because um, he saved a bunny when when Crook, um, yeah, I've stopped calling him Crooked Tail because when you have to, I remember we had a, a text message a few uh, months ago and you said, what's the cat's name? And I said, Crooked Tail. And you said, what's the cat's name? And I'm like, Crooked Tail, because <laughs> he's got a crooked. So now I call him Crook and I call his, his litter mate Bob because his tail is even shorter. Um, so <laughs> Bob and Crook, but Crook was coming back across the street with a fresh baby bunny in his mouth and uh, still alive. And he likes to walk right, Max runs on a run and a lead. And so he has a very distinct path, you know, in the grass where his chain stops. Um, and Crook came just a little bit too close. And when Max lunged, he got surprised and he opened his mouth and the bunny got away. So Max became a wonder dog. <laughs> he saved a bunny. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the first episode of The Country Tales. What else do I have on Kindle Vella? Um, the sequel to Sovereign Souls Whosoever Edition, which is in paperback and ebook. Um, and finally, 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 I think the audiobook is on a hard drive in the mail to me so that I can get it up on <laughs> Audible pretty soon. Um, but the sequel to that Sovereign Souls Light Edition is also on Kindle Vela. Um, that is a tale with, I'm not sure how many uh, characters because the nice thing about Kindle Vela is that you're putting up a chapter or an episode at a time and you can put it up as you're still writing the story. So if you've got the story started, you put it up and then you might get feedback from readers. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to do that. There's a poll option, but um, yeah, that doesn't give me, it doesn't let you have open-ended answers, so it doesn't help me. Um, you know, if I'm saying, well, do you want to see X, Y, or Z? Yeah, I'd rather say, what do you want to see, and, and see what they want to see. But the Sovereign Souls Light Edition has um, assorted uh, characters who are um, housing insecure uh, teens, in in or arriving to Reno, Nevada, where they find the spiritual light center and learn about the light practice that I do. Um, and the next one in that series will be the Angel Tree Edition back in Nashville. Anyway, um, and that one has gender diverse characters also at risk for housing, um, although they're no longer at risk for housing by the Angel Tree Edition, they've solved that. Um, What's the third thread on? Oh, Matilda. Okay, um, this is Copper Matilda's cousin, but Matilda Stories is up and running and she actually has a following. Um, Matilda is my cane. Uh, she, she got adopted when I came back from swimming with dolphins last summer and my body was so inflamed because I had done the um, dietary choices and I'd said you know gluten-free and dairy-free I think but I didn't say fruit-free I didn't I wasn't aware of how inflammatory fruit was and I wound up having a lot of fruit three times a day uh -huh. and I was so inflamed plus being beaten around by the sea and everything and you know um yeah I was hanging on to the um walls <laughs> at Kroger before I got to the cane display to pick out Matilda and the funny thing, oh, I find it funny, was that I was writing episodes of Matilda stories. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of humorous look, life at, as a, you know, creaky old person le leaning on a cane and how do you, how do you politely introduce your cane into polite society? Yeah, how do you gracefully introduce your cane into polite society? Um, because I put on 
Matilda, I put a if found, please text you know, to her forgetful owner. Um, and uh, that's worked a couple of times. Um, and I started introducing her. This is Matilda, you know, and then if I lost her, have you seen Matilda? Yeah, she's over there. <laughs> it's great. Um, but it was a few months down the road and I realized Matilda didn't have any of her own chapters and she definitely should have a voice. And so I went back and wrote from her point of view about, oh, this creaky old woman is coming in and she's hanging on. And you'll understand this because right after that, I had been moving really well. I'd been using patches and all of that. I was like frozen and, and needing her, you know, I'm right after doing the point of view of your creaky old person, I was that creaky old person again. And it took me almost 24 hours to get back out of it. I mean, I did some some of the things you've taught me about thinking your way out of it. Um, and yeah, it it's so I'm kind of cautious about writing some of her chapters, although now she's talking about how good she is on the farm at lifting chicken butts and measuring between plants and 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 you know knocking Japanese beetles off of of um, grapes and roses into buckets of soapy water and you know she works hard. That's fascinating. I I always ask all of my devices, my car, my massage bed. Do you have a name? You want me to call you by the name? It's interesting that so far they've all been males. So I was talking, uh, I used two different computers to one of my computers yesterday. I said, do you have a name you want me to call you? And I came response. And, the, and I talked with, I said, you know, if you have a name, it'd be nice if it was a female name, but I didn't get a response. So I don't think it's weird to talk to your stuff because I think everything is real energy mm -hmm. response to us. Part of the, the light practice that I do and part of the Yoko farming tradition that I'm doing with it, um, some of the stories they talk about, um, like if the, the pump or the uh, engine that you want to start isn't working, um, offer it something. There was a story about somebody, I think it was an engine that wouldn't start, so they offered it to Mandarin Orange and it started. Okay. Well, and this computer that I'm on right now has... Uh, for three days now not wanted to boot up in the morning and I was thinking this morning okay what do I offer it and I'm looking around here I don't have food in my office and yeah I was like I should offer it a treat and maybe it'll be hit, be better instead I went to Lenovo and bought the extended service contract again so that I can call somebody to fix it <laughs> but it's running now obviously since we're talking on it. yeah it's running fine because you can't do much about a connection, so as long as your device is working. My, my other device has decided not to find the internet, and it doesn't offer me a way to do it, so it has a support ticket in. <laughs> I have an Amiga other night. I was desperately trying to put up a video, mm -hmm. and the computer would not go online no matter what I did, so normally they offer you a choice you know here here is a here's a wi-fi that's available it doesn't even offer me wi-fi it just says no connection you're not online yeah i did that too i guess that's part of why we're friends we get each other <laughs> same gremlins I, I know that you said you had some gifts i know you gave gifts last time do you have something to share today um, or matilda's stories um and yeah so that i don't remember what episode of you know it's 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 something different about matilda it but it's it's ties into matilda stories um, that will be fun i'm sure it's it's just in my my bubby who um mostly raised me because my mom had to work she had had an injury when she was young and the doctors couldn't help her so she had severely bowed legs and she always walked with a cane. Never, I, I never thought it was weird because I grew up watching her do that. Right, right. Never thought about naming her cane, but then I wouldn't have thought that way back then. Mm -hmm. We grow and change and get, we get so much better. Well, different, that's for sure. So thank you, thank you so much for bringing joy into our world and 
do you have any last minute things you want to mention or you're good? I'm good. I would just say, you know, live it to your heart and find joy in everything that you do. You know, find a reason to smile. Yes, yes. That's, I tell people all the time. People walk around with a frown. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Yeah, I uh, remind everybody to go ahead and go down to the show notes where you'll find the link to get the special offer book audio join our facebook group and visit our page where you can see both the audio <laughs> you can see the video and listen to the audio <laughs> yes yeah i was looking at yesterday how you they take your what do you call the picture for your your logo for your show mm -hmm. and you put the audio with it and they put it on youtube and say like, okay i'm gonna go to youtube for an audio well sometimes i do but not for a podcast so so go ahead and enjoy your day and remember that's capital i n capital j o y because everything that happens happens with n and i thank you thank you so much for being here with us today and as cynthia reminded you go out and smile You'll just feel better and you'll also enlighten and lighten up somebody else's world. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Allie B. Thank you so much for having me.